What's up guys, today I'm going to be demonstrating how you can hide the header or the footer on specific pages or specific templates on your Shopify store. And the reason why I'm making this video is because this is a really useful concept and a useful skill for you to have not just for hiding the header and footer, but actually for hiding or conditionally outputting absolutely anything across your Shopify store not only using, you know, the show hide sections, right, as you may have noticed, the header and the footer are not sections that you can remove or hide the announcement bar as well. And actually not just entire sections, but things within sections as well. If you want to hide things, and they don't have a way for you to hide them through the theme customizer, then um, you can do that in code using this method. And particularly if you're on an older theme that is not on Shopify 2.0, you won't have the ability to actually show or hide sections like this using the theme editor, you don't have this add section button. And so this method that I'm about to teach you is actually the only way that you can hide sections on specific products or pages collections on a Shopify 1.0 or a vintage Shopify theme. Okay, so let's get into it. I've reset my store. So it's back to normal. It's showing the header and the footer across all pages, I'm going to go into themes, and then click on actions and edit code to enter the code editor. Then I'm going to open up theme.liquid as you saw, it was already open from last time, but open up your theme.liquid file. I hope this is large enough for you. Let's scroll down. And we're going to find the section header section footer and the section announcement bar, right? So these things are listed as separate sections, because they're not dynamic sections, they're not in your main, like content area where you can drag sections around, they're actually outside of it, right? So that's why they're separate in the code. And that's why if we want to hide them, we actually need to edit the code here, you may have heard of if statements, right? And that works like if some condition, right? Um, and end if at the end. And so if some condition is true, then this code is going to be included. Well, we kind of want the opposite of that right now, we want this to be the default, we want this to be on most pages, unless it's the product page. So we're actually going to use unless which is kind of like the opposite of if, but this just makes more sense to me in this context even though it might be a little bit more confusing for you. But this is what we're going to write unless template.name is equal to product, whoops, like that. And, uh, you know, for proper liquid Shopify liquid syntax, we wrap logic like this, in a curly brace and a percentage sign. So that's the code that we're going for unless template.name is double equals product then we're going to output the footer. And unless, so this will output the footer on all pages, unless it's the product page, the product page will not output the footer. Now, we can do exactly the same thing around the announcement bar and header sections if we want to. So here's our unless, let's paste our end unless, like so, and let's tab both of these in just so that's neat. As you can see in code, we always tab in when something is like inside of some other code. So that's done at the simplest level, we've done what we wanted to do. Now there's different kinds of templates in Shopify, we have the product template, we have the collection template, so you can use that. We have the index template, which is the home page. If you want a list of all the templates that are in Shopify, you can go to shopify.dev slash themes architecture templates, or just just go to shopify.dev or just search up Shopify templates, right. And you can find a list of all the templates of all the template names, right. So as you can see product, and um, index for the home page, page for regular pages like about us and contact us static pages, as I call them, the cart page, blog pages, and so on. And you can use all of these names inside of uh, this code here inside of this part. So depending on what page you want to hide something on. Alright, now let's get a little bit more advanced with this, you might have a specific product where you're using templates, you're on Shopify 2.0, 
maybe you watched my templates video and uh, you've assigned a specific template to a specific product and you want only this type of product or products using this template to not show the footer or header or any other part of the page. So we can target templates with these names as well. The way you would do that is product.backpacks. So unless template.name equals product.backpacks, something like that. Okay, the only issue here is that template.name actually refers to the first part of the template. So template.name is product. And backpacks, well, you can access this with template.suffix. And then you could do something like this. If template.suffix is backpacks, right? Or in general, this is the easiest way to do it unless template is equal to product dot backpacks, like so, that would target exactly our template, which is called product dot backpack. So as you can see here, the header and announcement bar have now disappeared from this backpacks template, but not from the default product template. If you're ever unsure of what the template is, what the template name is, or what the template suffix is, you can output the template like so double curly braces instead of curly brace percentage sign is just to output something as text, we can save that refresh our page, we can see what template we're on, we can see that on products, it outputs product uh, on the default product page. And if we go to backpacks, we can see that it outputs product dot backpacks. So we can always see what template it is. And you can use that information to set up your your condition. Now, the last thing I want to show you is that you don't have to go specifically for templates, you can go for the product name, for example, if product dot not the name products have a title. So unless the product title is equal to maybe gift product, like so, then we want the footer. Okay, so this would hide the footer from this uh, this product that I have called gift product. Now the, the issue here is that this can be kind of unreliable, you could rename the product, and then your code will break. It's also kind of might be case sensitive. Anyway, I just don't like this kind of format. Usually, I would use the product dot handle and the product handle is what we have here. And that's a lot safer, it will always be lowercase. Um, it's less likely to change if you rename your product, you probably won't change the URL. And yeah, I would just prefer to do it like that. So now on this specific product, we won't have the footer, as you can see. But on all other products, we would still have the footer. So guys, I hope that made sense. That's pretty much all there is to know. And you can really do a lot with this knowledge. The only thing is if you're finding it kind of hard to remember all of this to, to remember the rules, what's template name, template suffix, um, I recommend using the Shopify cheat sheet. Okay, this is from shopify.com slash partners slash Shopify dash cheat dash sheet. And here, you can find basically everything there is to Shopify liquid. And this is really useful whenever you need to do something like this, you can search for template. And here you'll find the template object, and you'll find lots of examples for what it outputs. So template.name, and you'll see that it outputs product template.suffix, and you'll see that it outputs alternate if you're using a template that's called product.alternate, right? Yeah, the Shopify liquid cheat sheet is very useful. Lastly, if you're interested in learning a bit of Shopify theme development, if you want videos that are more about code, then I highly recommend watching this one for showing the SKU. Um, this is a useful skill, not just for showing the SKU, but for any variant information and updating that information when you change the variant. This one on coding an accordion is also a good tutorial that will teach you a lot of skills that you need. But in general, if you found this video useful, make sure you subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment if you have any questions, and I'll see you next time.